So, hi Molly and hi Stephen. Um, I think I'm supposed to be the first one to kick off by asking Molly a question. So, uh, someone in Bristol West told me recently that you'd been talking to them about my work with refugees and that you were keen to carry on the work that I'd been doing. And I just wondered if you could say a bit more about that, what in particular you want to carry on. Well, actually, it's quite interesting. My very first job was with a refugee studies project in Oxford. And so kind of when I first went into the world of work, I met an awful lot of refugees. And rather curiously, the first person who told me to get into politics was a Chilean refugee. And I mean, I'm older than you, but back in those days, there were a lot of refugees from Latin America. And that's given me a great interest in Latin America. And I work a lot on human rights in Latin America in the European Parliament. Obviously, in Bristol, the issues are a little bit different, and they're more about the refugees coming from some of the war zones, so, you know, Eritrea and Syria and so on. And one of the things I did also gain, because people were writing to me as their MEP with concerns about refugees, so one of the things I did was to um, visit the Calais camp. I expect you went as well, didn't you? And just no, I was ill at the time. Oh, OK. Well, anyway, you know, the conditions there were dreadful, mm -hmm. so I tried very hard to lobby the government to yeah. improve conditions there. Mm -hmm. And I also stood up and spoke about a human rights um, motion that was put down to say we should challenge the fact that their homes were being destroyed in the Calais camp. So those are some of the sorts of things I've been doing in terms of your work. I mean, I'm not obviously following your work that closely, right. I'm getting on with my own work. But, um, so that's why I was of, interested well, in you so saying you wanted to continue what I'd been doing. Well, I so. obviously I don't want to do exactly what you've been doing because I would be an MEP yeah. doing my own work. But I think obviously the City of Sanctuary is a very important thing that a lot of people mm -hmm. in Bristol are very proud of. That's obviously something I'd like to support. And also the, working with the various refugees. I mean, I've met quite a lot of the refugee support um, organisations here, but also across the South West. And that's the kind of thing I'd like to be taking forward. So I, I chaired the AP All Party Parliamentary yeah. Group on yeah, Refugees sure. for the last two years. And I initiated a cross-party inquiry, which had, you know, people from the Green Party, the SNP, the Liberal Democrats and the Tories on it. And we published that report, Refugees Welcome, just before Parliament was dissolved. I mean, all of us have probably done casework for refugees, but in addition to that, I'm just interested in what else you'd be trying well, to do I in think, national parliament. I think I've said some of the things I want to do. To be honest with you, I mean, refugees is your issue. Mm -hmm. It might not be my primary issue. Right. I would see it as a constituency issue, probably right. more than something I'd take up in parliament, because right. I've got a lot of economic and tax issues. But anyway, what let's you give you a chance. I suspect it's something that we probably all have done good yeah. things over the long time that we've yeah. been involved in politics and we probably don't disagree on mm -hmm. anything about how refugees should be treated uh, by our national government and how we would treat them if, if we were the Member of Parliament. Certainly in the ten years that I was the MP for Bristol West, I probably met more refugees on an individual mm -hmm. basis than anybody in the city, both in my surgeries uh, and, and going out to meet them in, in, in Lawrence mm -hmm. Hill. Uh, and St Paul's and helped a lot of Kosovans it was actually at the start mm -hmm. of my mm -hmm. term uh, and, then, and then Somalis uh, mm -hmm. get, get, get their citizenship and I'm proud of the work that my staff did as well yeah. and we yes, both know that staff. MPs do quite yeah. a lot but yeah. their staff uh, yeah. really do have to fight their corner well, I and, and I've been to yeah. Palestine too so I have yeah. actually been to I haven't been to Calais mm -hmm. uh, but I've been to UN uh, camps uh, in the Gaza mm -hmm. Strip uh, and in the West Bank. It's a good example actually of how if you represent a seat like this you're going to get involved in that issue because mm -hmm. people in mm -hmm. Bristol West really care about that. It's mm -hmm. one of the really nice things about Bristol West that you know when you get asked a question about mm -hmm. refugees like we did in the hustings the mm -hmm. question is why don't we have more of them you know and I think it's yeah very positive thing about this constituency. I think it's interesting that you know Stephen's reflected something about the nature of the work changing. So you said you were dealing with Kosovans. I haven't had to deal with a single Kosovan as Member of Parliament, but an awful lot of Syrians mm -hmm. coming Which through different that. routes. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. th things have changed and the needs have changed. And as the chair of the All Party Group, what I was trying to do was talk about having a proper national integration strategy with a Minister for Refugees. And, and I think it would be a good idea if we did that. Um, so I think it's time for one of you to take over. We're not <laughs> being chaired, so it's we're self chairing here. Did we do the self chairing okay? Right, I've made my mind up at the last minute about this. Uh, and it is going to be about the, what ought to be the big issue mm -hmm. in, in this election, which is our place with or outside the mm -hmm. European Union. It's about the Labour Party's role in the referendum and since. A lot of people told me in the run-up to the referendum they were voting leave, all sorts of reasons. But one of the reasons that came up a lot in Bristol was they didn't like the fact that it appeared to be fronted by Cameron and Osborne mm -hmm. and didn't believe what they were saying. Do you regret that Jeremy Corbyn refused to share a platform with the Prime Minister, with Tim Farron, with Natalie Bennett, who was leader of the Green Party at the time, with the leaders of Plaid Cymru and the SNP? Because I think if we had a completely united front of all the mainstream party leaders, the referendum, which was narrowly lost, a lot more Labour voters and Labour sympathisers in particular might have voted Remain. And do you also regret Jeremy's role since the referendum 
when basically he's whipped the Labour Party in Parliament. I know you voted the right way as far as I'm concerned on one issue, you. Uh, but, but do you regret the fact that he's whipped the Labour Party in Parliament into basically accepting that Brexit is done and there is no going back? Um, I'm going to reject the premise of your question, I'm afraid, Stephen. I, what I, what I um, regret is the result of the referendum, and I think we all have, a part of, have something to think about there and reflect on. You and I were both involved in campaigning for Remain, I think all of us were. I will be a Remainer till I die, and I've carried on making the case for Europe, and, and as you acknowledge, you know, I voted against Article 50 being triggered because I felt that Theresa May, who is unfortunately the Prime Minister, has ruled out all the best other options. Now, I think what the Labour Party's done under Keir Starmer's um, position as, as Brexit spokesperson, he has outlined a good position for us to think about having a future relationship with the EU, and I think that's the right thing to do. I would rather, I would rather we didn't leave the EU, but the referendum has happened, mm. and we're going to need to work on that Labour relationship. you're the Labour Party candidate in, yeah. in this election. I know you're describing yourself in yeah. your leaflets as the progressive choice, I which am. I think is a word that all three of us would want mm. to consider is, is, is not associated yeah. with one party o o over another, rather than the Labour candidate. Is that, is, yeah. is, that, is that why? Because you know a lot of people are really angry, in Bristol West in particular, with, with, with Corbyn and the Parliamentary Labour Party for saying we should leave the single market, we should end freedom of movement. And that's not quite what's happened. I mean, the, the freedom of movement thing, just it just will happen when we leave the EU. It's not that we're choosing that. It's just that's one of the things that will happen. The rules allowing Brits, unfortunately, to be able to travel around but EU just Labour will end. What? We did push for, we put down amendments um, to the Brexit bill, the Article 50 bill. We put down amendments asking for the government to reconsider and protect the rights of EU citizens. And the government rejected those, well, not the Labour Party. Just on the start of this journey, the Labour Party seems to have given up right at the very no, start on being in the single and market. It, and it, it, it definitely really weakened your position, the fact that you said you would vote for triggering of Article 50 I didn't. anyway, even if I didn't there were no amendments. Can I just get to my main question here, which is, I checked your voting record and you voted mm. twice on Brexit, didn't mm. you? So there was quite a public consultation before the April vote, but in December you voted to leave the EU. Didn't no, you? I didn't. So the that wasn't that wasn't what that okay. amendment okay. said. That was an no, opposition was that? day. That was an opposition day motion, which was asking the government to state clearly what their Brexit negotiation voted in plan favor was. Of the United Kingdom leaving no, the that's not what that vote was. Well, this so is according that's been, to they work for you. Yes, well, they've misrepresented what that okay. vote was. That was an opposition day amendment, and I can produce the full amendment if you like, Molly, so for the next well, listing, so we can get it quoted properly. Maybe for the film. Amendment that was a, it was um, um, a it was a motion sorry not an amendment it was an opposition day motion to ask the government to reveal their uh, their plan for Brexit which they had consistently refused to do and as a result of us doing that as a result of us doing that they did actually climb down and said they would reveal their plan now that was a victory in my view well, okay. that wasn't in, in, voting in the remaining that seconds, wasn't voting for Brexit yeah. Molly and I agree that the British people should have the final yeah. say in 2019 why is the Labour Party against that because we've already had a referendum. I didn't think the first one was a good idea. I certainly don't think having a second one's going to make it any better. But I think it's deeply it? undemocratic to ask the British people and say to them, you've already voted, but you voted the wrong way. Let's give you another chance. I not, think we need parliamentary not. scrutiny and a final parliamentary vote because this vote, this referendum was supposed to be all about parliamentary but sovereignty. But it's not the same choice twice. No, people voted right. to start the process of leaving. When we see what the mm. final deal is, then we have it's to decide whether that's better. Very it's a very high risk strategy. strategy. It can't be a high risk strategy. strategy. Than definitely strategy. leaving, which is it's your strategy. Absolutely high risk strategy. Okay, so um, I'd like to take us on to the question of peace and defence. And obviously, the Green Party is very committed to us living in a, in a peaceful world and thinking about foreign affairs on a global basis and building our security on a global basis. And um, I'd just like to be clear for the electors of Bristol West about where your party stands, Stephen, on Trident. I've read your manifesto. I can't really understand what your position is. I mean, our position is that, you know, it's 110 billion, probably it will go, it will increase. That money could usefully be spent on public services. We shouldn't be spending it on a, a weapon that actually, in my view, is immoral and can never be used. The Lib Dems position seems to be something different from that, but perhaps you could explain what it is and how much money it will cost. The, the party position uh, is that we would maintain a minimum uh, nuclear capability. Uh, we wouldn't rena renew Trident on a like-for-like -like basis. Uh, we don't think you need to have the continuous uh, uh, round-the-clock at sea, at sea uh, basis with the four current Trident submarines. We, we think that's an expense far too far. But the party's view is that we would keep uh, minimum nuclear deterrence. Now, the reason I'm saying the party's view is that, as I know, have heard me say before, my own view 
and me standing in the election, sometimes we do differ slightly from our parties, as we've just discussed over, over, over Europe, is that since the Cold War, I've changed my mind. I always, when, when I was young, when I was in school, I was in favour of uh, NATO and Britain having the nuclear weapons because there was a clear and present danger not very far away in East Germany. Once that ended and Europe is now united and that's something to celebrate, I thought there was no real threat to our country's security that would warrant us having uh, nuclear weapons and staying in the nuclear weapon club. I think it's now um, almost a matter of national pride for some politicians that they can't quite let go of it and they think it gives us a seat at the top table. I, I but, think but that's people, partly delusional myself. But people in your party think that, obviously, because that's they your do. party's position. Yes, and I differ from that. And how much do you think it would cost? And can you persuade your colleagues that that would be better spent on hospitals and schools? I think it would be... I don't think that... that that's always the easy trade-off that people make, that if you don't spend money on arms, you would spend it on, on, on hospitals and schools. You know, people say the same things from a different perspective. Don't spend money on equalities because you should spend them on Boy Scouts. You know, that used to be thrown at me constantly over gay rights, for instance, in the past by conservative well, politicians in Bristol. Like so, that, these, so these easy trade-offs are very simple, but, but nothing is, 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 is that simple. I think we need a defensive capability. I'm not a pacifist. We might differ on that. I do think there is a role for armed intervention. So I think it was right for Tony Blair to intervene, uh, intervene in Sierra Leone and, and in Kosovo. And I made the argument uh, when I was a young politician in Bristol for those, for those interventions. But I don't think we need to remain a member of the nuclear club anymore. And we should use the capability we have to negotiate uh, a proportionate reduction by, by the Russians and maybe the Chinese. I tend to agree with you that if we weren't sure wasting money on things. nuclear weapons, we would have more to invest in our conventional forces, which have actually mm. been quite depleted, I think. But yes, would you like Well, to I just want to make the argument for multilateral um, global disarmament, because I agree that the world will be a much safer, much better place without nuclear weapons. And the change that I've made over the years is that I used to believe in unilateral disarmament, which is where we go to pull our arms and then hope other people follow suit, and to multilateral disarmament, which is where we negotiate together. And while Labour was in government, we did more than any other government to reduce the number of nuclear weapons and reduce the nuclear stockpile. So I'm really proud of that record and I want us to continue. So is Labour supporting the new process that started at the UN back in October? Yes, we've always said that we are in favour of global nu mm. multilateral nuclear because disarmament. Because the British government's obviously trying to veto that. The government is, hard. yes. And what is Labour's position on Trident? Yeah, but the, the Labour Party is in favour of renewing Trident as part of our, our tradition of global nuclear disarmament. And How can part the new and Trident be part of because disarmament? Because it's part of our obligations under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Proliferation Treaty to other non-nuclear powers that they agree not to arm so that w but they are they come under our nuclear umbrella. But don't umbrella. you see that a country like North Korea, how can you say to a country like North Korea it can't have a nuclear weapon if we say we have to does. have a nuclear weapon to keep ourselves safe? But it's this is deterrent. the point. But this is the point about proliferation. If we have to have nuclear weapons to keep ourselves safe, any country can make and an argument. Reduced, and some and of them we reduced really our unstable. total number of nuclear weapons under the last Labour government and we would continue to reduce them under a future one. And so do you think the Trident as it is currently with it failing tests and not being you know basically not well, working it, very well? Would you, in the would early you, would you th use that? Do you think you should push the button? The idea and... of a deterrent is that hopefully you will never need yeah, to, but, but you have to be willing to say yeah. that you would, otherwise it doesn't work as a deterrent. It's I don't want to live in a world where we have any nuclear weapons, but I definitely don't want to live in a world where only North Korea's got them. But because I don't trust North Korea. Is your position different from Corbyn's on this? Yes, and just as your position is slightly different from your party. Are you saying ultimately you think that the government should be prepared to use them? Your leader should be prepared to use them? You have to say that you are prepared to use them, otherwise they don't work as a deterrent. Deterrent. And I don't want a world in which the only power that's got them and is willing to use them is North Korea, because I definitely don't trust North Korea. I, I think, I mean, po poll after poll has always shown that, that when you ask the public what's important to them is always health care. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I use the NHS on a regular basis. I know Thanem's uh, had to as well in, in the last two years, which was since she's been an MP. I had a massive neurological attack in 2007 that took me out of work as a member of parliament uh, for, for a few months as well. So I am very dependent as, as a person on the NHS and Southmead Hospital for regular treatment. So I know how important it is to people and it has to be there when you need it. We all agree that it needs more money. I think the difference, in particular in between the Labour Party and Liberal Democrats in this election, is that we, I've said we've got the guts to say that 
all income taxpayers should pay something. So we're putting up income tax by 1p on each rate so that we all contribute something towards the NHS, raising £6 billion for NHS and social care. Why doesn't the Labour Party uh, come along with that? We're quite surprised yeah. you didn't. We're, we've taken a slightly different approach, which is we believe that the money should be raised from taxation, but we are increasing the rate of taxation for the top 5% and also reversing the Tory tax cuts to corporation tax, which would not put corporation tax above our European um, competitors. It would actually put it about the same rate. So we think that doing that is the fairer way to do it because the, um, the Tory government has hurt those on lower and middle incomes more than the richest. They've actually benefited to the rich. So we want to reverse that balance and try and balance things out better. We also are for investing more, seven billion more mm. um, in the NHS, but to me the hidden agenda here is always privatisation. I think people are really shocked when you tell them that 24% of contracts are going out to the private sector. Yeah. People consistently yeah. say in surveys that they want to have a fully public NHS. Yeah. The Green Party has never had anything to do with privatisation of the NHS, and we never will. We would have an NHS reinstatement bill to immediately bring all those contracts back in as rapidly as we could. And I think we also need to challenge the PFI contracts, because that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. we can't afford to fund our NHS properly, because a lot of money is just going out to mm. finance companies. This sort of buy yeah. now, pay Southmead later is a PFI NHS. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's been a disaster. And I think when, when we walk into Southmead, though, Stephen, would you not agree? When I walk in, I it's don't amazing. think about the PFI, I walk in, I think this is a cathedral to health. Every time, it's got the latest equipment. When I came around for my operation, I was treated in a state-of-the-art surgery with state-of-the-art recovery facilities. But we can't, I don't regret that. But we can't afford to pay for it forever. It's like buy now, pay later. It's like you buy a new car and you love that car, but ultimately you can't afford to pay for it. It's an investment. It's an investment, it's an investment and you know, on the never In, never, in 1997, when the, the Labour government came, when the Labour government came into power, the Tory government had already introduced PFI. The very first PFI was the Sky Bridge. And the Labour government found that the investment we wanted to make in the health service, all the capital reserves had been Absolutely. wiped out by the Tory government. So the Labour government decided we're going to invest in schools and we're going to invest in hospitals. And we decided that that was something worth doing. I and we couldn't get the money just by borrowing. I, I prefer your policy now, which is mm. borrowing to invest. I think you should have done that then. I think you should do it now. Yeah. It's possible now, otherwise it wouldn't be your manifesto, and it was no. possible then. It was harder then. It was a lot harder. Well, interest it was rates, easier then. Interest rates were a lot higher. 97 interest was, was rates were a lot higher. Growing unemployment was falling. It was, it was a, a lot, lot easier. To, it, was it was a lot easier to find money invest before the financial well, crisis. Well, I disagree. But we need to do it now. I think. I think and I'm not sorry that Southmead Hospital's there, but we were asked what None we think the most we were asked what the most important issue is for Bristol West. And I would say given that the, the support that the school cuts march were had on Saturday where I was, mm -hmm. I think schools are a key issue. Every single parent has received a letter in the last few weeks at the local schools that I've spent time at. They've all been told, we need your help, just to fund teachers and books and exercise books. You know, that's the sort of thing we need. But it's more. the same argument, isn't it, about the cuts? I mean, the, mm. the Tory government has a misguided economic policy mm -hmm. where they carry on cutting and they have less yeah. to invest and we're in a downward yeah, spiral. Yeah, absolutely right. So, you know, I think you should have the courage to challenge the economic model. We have. The earlier Labour government. We have. But you just defended it. You just defended a, a debt-based model. I'm not. Whereas I think you should borrow and not use private debt. I, I am not saying that we shouldn't do things differently now, but this is 2017, that was 2000, 1997, that's 20 years on, things are different now. And I'm absolutely clear, I'm absolutely clear that the Tory government has cut and cut and cut and really hurt people, and we need to reverse things but the now. Decisions your I'm not going to condemn. Made, the not, decisions your party made 20 years ago have left us in the I'm not going to condemn the investment the that our government made in schools and hospitals. But the schools where my nephews and nieces are educated in Bristol West, the hospital where I've been treated, all of that, I'm not going to condemn It's coming any home to roost now now though because it was debt-based policy then so we need to move beyond that and we do need to do that by taking responsibility for the mistakes that were made I think.